Some of you have been asking like, well, I'm on the smaller side or I'm not very strong or I'm a little bit older. Or I'm, I'm way past my prime, man. And, you know, I don't like guns and I, I don't know about knives or nothing, but could you recommend anything else? Yeah, of course. Of course. That's what I do. That's, that's my job. So today it's a little bit out of order, but we're going to talk about how to use a stick to defend yourself. Stick with me. What's up, Warriors? This is Kiyoshi Dave Herman with Five Elements Tactical Training, here to share with you some warrior skills and drills that anyone can learn and everyone should know. If you're new to the channel, welcome, and thanks for stopping by. If you already follow us on social media and that's how you find your way over to this channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the bell notification button and the little thing where it says all notifications so YouTube will let you know when the next video drops and you get all sorts of cool content from here as well. So check this out. I spent a lot of years uh, studying traditional Okinawan karate uh, and weaponry. And a lot of the things that they used and that I learned, and, and I still teach, uh, not, not as much as I used to, but um, they were into like using farm tools as the methods to defend themselves. And there's a whole history behind it and how and why that came about, but I spent a lot of years learning how to use those traditional farm tools that they used way back when in Okinawa to defend themselves, to compete in tournaments and defend against, you know, defend myself and all that stuff. And I just don't know how practical it was to find one of these laying around if I was in a fight somewhere, anywhere, how practical that I'm going to find a kama or comma, depends on how you pronounce it, or a sai. You know, I love, man, Raphael from the Ninja Turtles, a lot of, like, it was cool, um, and it made stick fighting make more sense to me, and stick fighting made this make more sense to me, but again, how practical is this thing? Not very. Tunfa. Now, there are police agencies out there that still use what's called a PR-24 or PR-28, depending on the length of the baton. But, uh, and this is very practical, but again, how practical is it that I'm going to find something, I'm not going to walk around carrying it, right? But that I'm going to find something that I could use like this to, uh, you know, again, defend myself. And again, not very practical. As much as I love nunchucks, like the nunchaku, not just Michelangelo and the Ninja Turtles, but I mean like, and I also don't mean like the tricking where you see like people flipping this thing around all crazy and whatnot. And man, I love Bruce Lee. I grew up on that stuff. But how practical is this? And even the way I learned how to use this was not with the fancy flash. It was more like you hold it and when they get close, you crack them, use it to block. And again, this whole another video if you ever want to, there's a million videos out there. You don't need me to show it to you. But um, as much as I loved it and as practical I think this is, how practical is it that I'm going to find that thing laying around on the street? And the answer is not very. There are plenty of times that you might find some sort of long stick that you could use like a bow. A bow is a long stick, B-O. Um, still practical, but how practical is to start swinging this thing indoors or like maybe at a bar, you pick up like the, the pool tube next to the pool table and go to work on somebody if you had to. But um, of all the weapons that I've learned and studied and trained and teach, by far, the Filipino stick fighting stick is the most practical because they're, they're everywhere. Once you understand the concepts of how to use it, you, you'll, your wooden spoon, your uh, the spatula when you're outside grilling, my neighbors must think I'm nuts because no matter what thing I'm holding that resembles a stick around this long, I'm twirling it and practicing with it like I'm defending myself. So I'm going to show you some cool stuff, show you some cool tips. Uh, I'll show you how to get started even without the actual equipment and uh, you let me know what you think. All right, let's get after it. All right, so I got two sizes here. I have the size that I typically use, which is just under about 30 inches, about 28, 29 inches. I have this shorter one, which uh, I practice with sometimes, but I really, I have them more for my children. I got little kids, and uh, when I teach them, especially when my, my daughter was very little, um, I started her with these around, I don't know, as soon as she was old enough to uh, hold it up in her hand. So again, you know, could I practice with this? Absolutely. But, um, I practice pretty much with one, sometimes with two. It's light, it's rattan, there's like some uh, pliability to it, like it's a little bit of a flex. It's not very heavy, it's not like a, uh, it's not a bludgeoning type of weapon. It's more of like a, more of like you use it similar to a whip, okay? When I first started, I had met my uh, Filipino martial arts instructor, who's also one of my closest friends, um, when he first came over from the Philippines. And I had already been doing a lot of uh, traditional Okinawan martial arts, and he was a karate guy and a Filipino. The art that he studies and teaches is called Eskrima. So I had never seen somebody in person swing a stick like that in my life, or a knife. So me and my buddies that we all trained with him, we went to Home Depot, and we got 
plunger handles. So I went to Home Depot yesterday, make sure they still had them, and they do. And it's definitely shorter than the stick I used for practicing, but I could still practice the skills with a plunger handle. So if you have one at home, I don't know if you'd want to take this thing after it's been in the toilet and start practicing with it. Unless you want to wash it first. Or you go to Home Depot and you get one of these from, I think it was like two bucks. And you're going to get one, you get two. So I also got, these are PEX, like uh, you're using more and more of this type of piping for plumbing work. And uh, they came in red and blue, so I figured I would have some like Star Wars fun with my kids. But these are longer. These are about 25-ish uh, inches. They were maybe like two or three bucks. Three bucks for this little section. It came cut just like this. And um, same thing, they're plenty light. And uh, I don't know, you could use it all the same way. But again, you don't need to go get a wooden stick or wait for shipping or whatever. Next time you're at your local hardware, st hardware store, you pick up some of these things and you go home and start practicing. So on to the basics. Basically, when you're, you're using a stick for self-defense, and it does not have to be a long stick, it could be any stick, but again, I study Eskrima, which is very similar to Arnis and Kali, uh, all Filipino martial arts. They start you with a stick. Most martial arts, you go in and you learn like empty hand first, and when you get good at that, if they teach weapons, they introduce you to the weapons later on. Filipino martial arts, you show up on your first day and they're like, here's a stick, good luck. And you start with the stick, and then all the techniques that you learn with the stick later translate to the blade. So they take the stick out of your hand, they give you a knife, say, okay, show me the same stuff, and, and it applies. And then when you get good at that, they take the knife away, and now, well, show me the same techniques, but with the empty hands. So cool, so, so cool. When you hold the stick, one, you're gonna hold it so that you have two or three inches below your hand, um, so that you could use that for striking, like you use it like, uh, you know, first, like stabbing with the bottom end, like hitting with the butt of it, or what's called a puño. Um, you also use it for trapping, so like, Bob has a weapon and I block his stick, I trap his hand, I use the hook to trap his hand and strip the weapon away from him when I'm doing my disarms. So when you grab the stick, make sure you have a little bit of space beneath your hand. When you're swinging the stick, again, I'm sure there are, I know there are so many different arts and styles on uh, stick fighting. So I'm going to show you the way that I learn it, the way that I study it, the way I teach it. If you have another way, a different way, a different style, a better style, tell me because I'll, I'll, I'll go do my best to try and learn that too the way I teach it to beginners, and not just for like my martial arts students, but a lot of police officers that they get issued a baton, whether it's an expandable baton, a sit baton, whatever it is, um, and you learn some crash course stuff in the academy that it's basic at, at best, and you learn it like for, I don't know, a day or so, and then you pretty much never use it ever again. Uh, you're certified to use it, and then you use it like, ah, in that moment where if you had some more practice with it, you'd probably be a little bit better at it. A stance. Being that when a stick becomes like your weapon and your shield, so typically, like I'm a righty, so I put my right leg forward. If I have the stick in my hand, the stick goes in front of me. So be, again, I'm using it as my weapon, like my, my spear and my shield, or my sword and my shield. We're not going to do too much parrying today, but you could just hold it pretty much straight up. You're like, whoa, something coming straight at you. You kind of hit it away, hit it away, hit it away. You could invert it. I'm not changing my grip. I just flip it over and I parry. So like wipers on the bus go back and forth. Wipers on the bus go back and forth. You have your basic guard, your basic stance, your basic parry, okay? When it comes to striking with this thing, I don't want to overcomplicate it. I'm going to make it like as simple as I can for you. So again, it's not like I'm chopping with an ax. It's more like if I imagine like I was holding a machete and when I go to, I don't want to chop with the machete or the sword, I want to slice through, slice through. So when I'm striking, it's not a bludgeon. You could do that and I'm sure it'll hurt, but the way that this works best, especially because of its, its light, to whip through your target, okay? We always start with like a basic X, like a forehand downward slash and then a backhand downward slash. So not straight down, but like you're drawing an X in front of you, right? And if you have two of them, you'll do one 10 times. We usually start with the single stick and then switch hands, put it in the other hand, and then we do 10 on this side. When you're doing your slashes, right, and you switch, you're gonna switch your hands and switch your feet and you practice this downward slash. When I strike, I'm trying to hit with like the top two or three inches of the stick, so it's really not the whole middle of it, but I want to stay a little further away. Nice, you're getting good, man. I gotta do my sit-ups like that, Bob. All right, so downward, one, two, 
three, four. Switch hands, switch sides. One, two, three, four. Switch hands, switch sides. Side view. One, two, three, four. Switch hands, switch sides. One, two, three, four. And the cool thing about sticks, when you watch somebody who's very good at it, the stick just always flows. It's so like graceful and smooth and pretty to watch and yet you see somebody wailing or when you see sparring it's, it's very very impressive. Remember that your downward slash can be to the collarbone. It could be you know somebody's really trying to hurt you breaks into your house or way bigger or they got a weapon and, and like you know like oh my god the head of course very uh the face you know just you got to make sure that you're justified in doing that because you could get yourself in a lot a lot of trouble. If uh, you just get all bent out of shape and start swinging something at somebody, you're, you're definitely gonna get in trouble. If you're defending yourself and you're defending your life and you really feel that your life is in danger and you're using a, a weapon to defend yourself, just make sure that uh, all the cameras watch and are gonna help uh, support your story. Anyway, downward slash, head, collarbone. Depending on the part of the body, the arms, the legs. The next one is a belly slash. So. If I was to block and move to the side, like I'm trying to slice through like the midsection to either the ribs, the elbow, uh, the hip. Sticks are best against bony surfaces, okay? So like if you're using a blade, you don't really want to cut the bone. The blade for self-defense purposes is you're always trying to like cut the muscles or the things that are, are trying to attack you. Like you can't grab me if, you, if your hand is like <laughs> cut wide open, you know? Um, whereas sticks, you're aiming for like, if I was attacking you with a stick and you have a stick, you're going to try and hit me in the hand or the wrist or the elbow. Something that's going to, ow, ow, ow. You strike the bony parts. The names for all the techniques is, are, are really not important. So I mean, I, I'll, I'll leave those out, but you have a downward slash, one, two, three, four. You have your sideways or horizontal slash. And again, it's to the ribs or to the elbow, to the hip. Elbow, rib, hip, side to side. Treat it like you're slashing. Again, if you had like a sword or a machete, it's not so much for chopping, but for slicing through. And you slice with the impact is gonna be pretty much, not the tip, but uh, the, the two or three inches below that. Your side to side, could it be to the head? Absolutely. The elbow, the rib, the hip, the knee, depending on the height, your height, if they were standing on a couple of steps and you were down a couple of steps and they were standing up on top of something and that's the closest target to you, then of course that's what you go for. The next way you're going to use this is just because it's a, a stick and not a blade and just because it's not pointy doesn't mean that you can't stab with the point of it. So just like we have what's called puño or like the butt of the stick to strike with that part, you could also use the front of the stick to stab. Without going into all the intricacies of how you use it from different angles, you keep it simple, especially in the beginning. Downward, horizontal, straight in, straight in, straight in with the bottom part, the downside, the, the butt, the puño, okay? And the next one is kind of like this spinning motion, okay? So, I believe it's called fan strike in English. I learned that it's what's called abanico. And abanico is it's more of like a, like a jab. When, if you could imagine, let me see where my machete is. If I were holding a machete uh, or a sword, short sword, think of it like hitting with the side of the blade or at the right distance hitting with like the tip of the blade. Side to side, side to side. All right, so the fan strike, just imagine holding the stick like above your head and then turn it, keeping it as parallel to the floor as you can. Simple, right? And your shoulder's gonna rotate a little and your arm's gonna move around a little, but you're pretty much, it's not a knockout strike. It's more of like a, we use it in combination of, of longer strings of techniques where pop, pop, it's a setup. It's like, ow, ow, and then you get them, all right? Abanico, or fan strike. 
The next one, which is very similar to Abanico, or the fan strike, is called Wittek. Again, that's how I learned these. Um, I'm sure they have other names from other styles, but Wittek is, if I were to go to hit Bob, and he put his hand up to trap my hand, I grab my wrist, and I can't go anymore, well, the stick will continue. Like, you kind of do this similar to your Abanico strike, but it's more like over the top to the head, or backhand over the, over the top to the head, or if you're going for the body and they grab, it kind of swings around. This way, if I was going to strike back in the trap, it's going to like swat or swing away from me. So Abanico is more like over your head this style, and Wittick is more like if somebody grabs a hold of you and you could not move your arm at all, just your hand. Abanico, you have more freedom to swing. Could you do them low? Sure. I, I learned them up high. But, uh, and Wittick is like if your hand was trapped, how would you cut? Could you use it without being trapped? Absolutely. We, I, like some of my favorite combinations come from... Uh, you know, attacking like the top of the head and then across the body and, and whatnot. All right, so quick review. <laughs> this is a stick. This is how you hold the stick. You make sure there's some room on the bottom so you can hit with that part and grab with that part. You put whatever, if you're a righty, you put the right side in front. You hold the stick up in front because the stick is both your weapon and your shield. You could parry like wipers on the bus go back and forth or you hold the same grip upside down. Wipers on the bus go back and forth for like blocking something that's coming like below your elbow. When it comes time for striking, very simple. You have your downward slashes, right? You have your horizontal slashes. You have your stabbing techniques, using like the, the point of the stick or also using the bottom of the stick. You have your fan strike, which is like, hands are up, like this type of motion here, where my arm is free to move and I'm kind of using the side of the stick, okay? And then you have your wittick, which I don't even know how to say that one in English, I'm sorry. But uh, if somebody was to grab your hand, how does like the stick continue to move if your hand is trapped and your arm is trapped? Like, pursue your attack. They block, they grab your hand over the top. You go to strike and they block and have your hand or your wrist over the top. If I go to strike down low and they block, continue to strike. If I go to strike down low and they block and they trap my hand, how do I continue my strike? All right, so five, downward, across, the stab, the bottom hand stab, abanico or fan strike, and the wittick. Well, if you made it this far and you like what I'm teaching and preaching, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and like this video. If you're loving it, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And if you got to have it, make sure you hit that bell notification button and the little thing where it says all notifications so YouTube will let you know when the next video drops. If you're really digging it and you want more, you can find me on all social media platforms at 5 Elements Tactical. That's all I got for now, Warriors. So until our paths cross again, pray for the best, prepare for the rest. I'm Kiyoshi Dave Herman with 5 Elements Tactical Training. Thanks for watching.